Hi, everyone. My name is Jason. I am J187 on uh, Stochastic Discord and on FanDuel and DraftKings. And uh, I'm making a video here today to show you how to pull stacks into your Excel model for NHL. Um, you can do it for MLB in a pretty similar way, but I'm probably going to end up making another video for MLB because it is slightly different. Um, so I'm starting off here, this NFL main page here, this is the product of some previous videos that I made in a series on how to basically create a model in general. And NFL was the test sport that I used. You can basically use that same video and produce you know, an MLB, NBA, NHL, whatever, uh, very slight um, differences, things you have to do to convert it over. So the starting point for us today is going to be taking this NFL model and converting it over to an NHL model. So if you haven't watched the other videos, you're going to want to do that first, at least the first video in the series to create the model in general. Because um, I'm not going to be starting from scratch here. I'm just going to be converting this one over. And if you have watched the other videos, you know that the way it operates is we have this main dashboard page here, NFL main, which we are going to now rename to NHL main. And then we have this copy player list and the data source that we use to produce these models in this video series is the player list from Fantasy Cruncher. Um, it contains, you know, stochastics projections and ownership and stuff like that, all the uh, information that we need. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to today's NHL slate and I'm gonna grab the player list from Fantasy Cruncher. And I'm gonna pop it in here just like it was the NFL one. <clears throat> and we're gonna check and see what happens. So first play here is Connor McDavid and we get Connor McDavid. So it's pulling in pretty much <clears throat> the way we, do, we would expect. However, we do have to remember that all of these headings correspond to Fantasy Cruncher for NFL. So sacks and you know interception fumbles. So um, if you remember the formula that we used is this uh, indirect substitute address formula. And what this does is it says to take the heading that's in here, in, you know, in this row, take this, go into the player list, find the first instance of it, and then start to pull that information down. And the reason why we use that rather than like a VLOOKUP or an index match is because with this formula here, it will find these headings wherever they are. So a fantasy cruncher one day decides that instead of my projections being in Y, it's going to be over here in AC and they're going to add a whole bunch of stuff in here it will find it in AC. You don't have to worry about that being an absolute reference. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab the NHL headers. And there's a lot fewer of them, it seems. So we're gonna grab those, come over here, and then we're gonna paste them by value right into here. And that's gonna give us all of the NHL stuff. Now the rest of this we can clear out. This is all just the remnants of the NFL model. I'm gonna leave the actuals column in there because the reason that's separated with a space here is we pull this data a little bit differently. But so for now, you can see we've now got um, all of this information corresponding to the NHL uh, data for Fantasy Country. So starting line, power play line, time on ice, all that stuff. Um, that's going to screw this up because this formula that we used, we deleted those row, uh, those columns where this was being pulled from. But again, this isn't an exercise in determining like exposures if you wanted to set caps, whatever. We don't even need this. This we can just get rid of for now. So now we've got this mostly converted over. I guess the other thing I should do here is just save this as, uh, I don't know, I'll just save it in tutorial, save it as NHL. In. There we go. Okay. So now we've got this part. Now we've got to take a look at our sorter. Okay. So the main page is all converted over. We'll pull into the sorter here. And obviously we have quarterback, running back, running back. They, these are not the positions that we want uh, for NHL. And so I should mention too, that I'm going to do this in DraftKings. Um, if you need, if you want to do this in FanDuel, you can simply just make some changes to this based on, 
the positionality and stuff like that that FanDuel has. So for this, it is center, center, wing, 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 and then D, D, goalie, flex. Right. Eight, nine. All right, we didn't miss anybody. So take this and we are just going to paste this by value here and then here and then basically everywhere that we have headings corresponding to players. Okay, so that part is done. Now, um, let me just grab this over here. So the very next thing that we wanna do, um, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll run a crunch really quickly and show you how this works. Let's just pull a couple lineups in. And actually, you know what, let me set, I'm gonna pull a crunch and I'm gonna run one with some stacks because that's what we're trying to do here is pull the stacks. So if we don't have any stacks, it's not gonna pull them. So let's get some stacks going. Run some three threes. I'm just setting up. I'm gonna run some randomness to make this go a little faster. Okay, now I'm just waiting for that to crunch. Fantasy Cruncher is stuck. There it goes. All right. So that's, oh my gosh. Why does it keep getting stuck? For some reason, my Fantasy Cruncher keeps freezing up on me and I have to keep restarting my crunch. There we go. Okay. So we're going to... Pull just a very small crunch into here because I don't want to wait too long for it to, to go. It tends to take kind of a while when you crunch three threes. I'll probably just run like 10 lineups or something. Um, and so as you can see, this is set up for football. So we can start going in here. Actually, I'll, I'll leave that just for now. We might want to change that to something rather than just straight up deleting it. And... If you, uh, if you remember from the previous video when we built this order, we basically just pull in some basic data, ownership projections for NFL. Uh, you know, we pulled in, boom, just as an example of something we can pull in. Actuals would be for the next day if you're going to, you know, study the slate. And then we have our total section and our sorting section. And again, all basic stuff. Um, as I always say, this is basically just to get concepts across. I fully intend for people to take this and run with it, add on to it, make it your own, uh, change things, do whatever you want. So I've got now um, 10 lineups here that I have with three threes and I'm going to export this. So you basically, uh, if you remember from the previous video, you just export the crunch like you were going to put it into CSV, but instead you paste it into this section and that'll pull all these names stripped. And it looks like even though it is NHL, it works the same way for Fantasy Cruncher through DraftKings that it puts the same IDs. So the stripping seems to work fine. Obviously ownership is not in the same place. So we're pulling some wrong data here, which is fine. So, um, I guess just I will show you how to correct this since we're doing it anyway. Um, as you see, this is looking at NHL main Z to Z is where it's pulling this data from, expecting that to be ownership. And as we go in here, we can see that Z is in fact the value grade, ownership is Y. So we'll come back into our sorter and we will fix this by just telling it that it is Y and not Z. And then that should 
pull that in properly and then we'll send that down and then this let's see it's got ac it thinks is projections and that's actually accurate so that's fine uh boom we're gonna leave that for now there's no boom it's gonna copy boom bust there's no nhl boom bust um but there is a top stacks that we'll be converting in a minute and then actuals it's pulling from the actual um column in there but there's nothing there so it is and a and that's all we have so we're good for now so the first thing we'll do here is we will pull in the top stacks tool so we're going to change this we're going to rename this to copy top stacks and there we go i'm going to come in here and grab the top stacks tool from stochastic and paste it in just to have this information here and then we're gonna go back to the sorter and let's hit the ground running. So um, let's go back to our main page here because one thing that we're going to need in order to be able to pull uh, stacks is we're going to need a way to identify which players are part of which stacks. And we're gonna do this two ways. We're gonna pull main stacks and we're gonna pull power play units. I would start by giving us some space in here because I'm going to pull a helper table into this area here, okay? And this helper table, we're basically going to be looking. Now you can pull the stack information from however you know wherever you want. You could import um, another tool here. Uh, you know, if you use FaceOff, whatever you use for data, you could pull it directly from the top stacks if you want. But for now, we're just going to pull it from Fantasy Cruncher. Again, I don't know enough if this is going to be the most up-to-date and accurate if you want to find a more accurate way to do this by all means but we're going to start by pulling in um which stacks each person is part of each player is part of and we'll do that here and what i like to do is i like to run a convention of for the main stack using the team name and then the stack uh, I'm sorry, and then the line, okay? So for this, I would simply just do equals. And then if you remember from all the other videos, I like to use this if a three equals blank, then blank trick, which basically says that if we run out of players down here, stop putting anything in these columns here. It just makes it a nice clean look. You, do, you know, you don't run into any, any errors that way. So if a three equals blank, make it blank. If it's not blank, then we're going to take the team name, which is N3 and the main line, which is W3 right here, the starting line. And so that should produce this Edmonton one. Perfect. So we're gonna call this the main stack. And then we'll call this our power play stack. Okay. So I'm gonna center all this. So for the power play, stack i'm going to do something very similar so i'll copy this paste it in but instead of running w3 we're going to run x3 because that's the power play unit but we're also going to add pp in between it so that we've got edmonton power play one just so we can differentiate between the two okay so now we've got our little helper table here for our stacks and we'll send this down. So now you're gonna notice here that we've got Washington unlikely. So now we realize that this is a goalie. So there are two conditions in which we don't want to be pulling these stacks. We don't wanna be pulling it for goalies and we don't wanna be pulling it for a defenseman. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna come in here and we're gonna update this a little bit, okay? So. If it's blank, make it blank. Otherwise, if, or, okay? If, or, if, and position is going to be L. So if either L3 equals D for defenseman or L3 equals G for goaltender. So then we have to close this out with the bracket because those are our if conditions are, or if or conditions. So now we're gonna say, if those things are true, 
then let's make this blank also. And if they're not blank, I mean, if they're not true, then we'll run our formula here. So basically, again, this just says, if there's no player here, make it blank. If it's a defenseman, make it blank. And this is a goalie, make it blank. Otherwise, pull this stack formula. And we will say yes to that. And we will fire this down. And you'll see that things start to disappear here, like the defenseman and the goaltenders. And now we're just going to run that same thing over here. If or if L3 equals D or L3 equals G, G then let's make this blank. Otherwise, let's run the stack. Run it down. And similarly, the goaltender and defenseman spots go blank. Perfect. So now we've got our stack done. So we're going to come back into our sorter here. And now what we want to do is we want to start pulling this information out for these players. So uh, let's find a spot here where we're going to pull this information. So for me, I'm going to I'm going to actually utilize this boom section here since it's not being used. And I'm going to call this line. So here we're going to pull the line, the main line, main, the main stack. Okay. And we're going to, so this is pulling from top stacks. So I'm going to erase all of this. So you can see here, we've got the, if L3 equals blank, then blank, which is L3 being the first player name. So in other words, if there's no lineup here, we don't need to be doing this. So if L3 equals blank, then blank. Otherwise, let's pull some data. And now we're going to run an index match. Um, I explained this thoroughly in my other videos, but just as a refresher, index match is a lookup. It's much, much better than VLOOKUP. Don't ever use VLOOKUP. Index match, basically the format of it is it's index. And then the array is where do you want to look for the data? Um, before I go to where we're going to look for the data, I do want to just remind you here, this, this center corresponds to this name, L3. So L3 is going to be where we're using the reference for this name. So just keep that in mind if L3 equals blank. So L3 is where we're going to be referencing. So now the first part is the array. Where are we looking for the data? We're going to look for this data in NHL main, and we're going to look for this data in our helper table for main stack, so E to E. So in NHL main E to E, in this column, let's pull the data, and then we're gonna say comma, the row number, this is where we use our match formula. So we're matching, what are we matching? Again, it's L3, so we're looking for that name. Um, match the name in L3, where are we matching it? A to A. So what it's gonna do is it's going to take, on that sort of page, it's gonna look for the first name in our lineup, L3, and it's going to find it in this thing. I think it was Connor, but I'm not sure. It's going to match it, and then it's going to pull the stack from the column E to E that corresponds to it. So now we've got our lookup array, A to A. Now, another comma tells us we need match type. Match type is always zero. Excel cannot do any other kind of match effectively. So always match it exactly. And then we just need to close our parentheses. And remember, close those until the black parenthesis indicates that you've closed the final one. And that's good. And it wasn't Connor McDavid, it was Sidney Crosby. So Sidney Crosby is part of Pittsburgh's first scoring line. And so there is that data now. So now we're going to take this and we're going to copy it all the way over. But before we do that, we have to realize that every cell reference is going to update to one over if we just start pulling this. So it's going to then say if M3 is blank, then blank, and then pull... NHL main FF M3 BB. So we already know that this isn't going to change, right? EDE is where the main stacks are. So we're going to put our cursor in here, hit F4 and lock this whole thing in. That means it will not, that is an absolute reference. It will not change for the next um, column over. We're going to do the same thing for A to A. And then you can totally leave it uh, the rest of it, because it doesn't, you know, if L3 is blank, it's going to go to is M3 blank and it's going to match M3. So we want to leave the rest of those. So now we can copy this and just paste it all the way across. And it's going to pull 
for everybody. Notice it did not pull defenseman, defenseman, or goaltender, which is good because we don't want to pull those. Um, it did not pull for flex over here, which is saying if T3 is blank, then blank. And this is, let's see here. Let me just bring this back up here to my lineups. So that's because we allowed a defenseman uh, in flex. So it won't pull for that flex spot with a defenseman here. Now let's take this whole thing and copy it down all the way. And you see, it'll start to populate, um, you know, Matt Shane, who's not a defenseman, it'll start to populate those. So as expected, it's not finding any line for the defenseman because we're, when we're pulling these stacks, we're pulling these stacks for uh, forwards only. We're not pulling them for defense, okay? If you wanted to keep track of your stacks that included your defense, you can definitely allow those in and you would do that by going back here and taking this D out, okay? But for me, I'm, I'm only trying to keep track of my centers and wings. So now we've got this, it's pulling the main line. The next thing we're gonna wanna do here is insert another section. And I like to use this, copy this whole thing and then paste it here and then change a the color slightly. And now this is going to be the power play lines, okay? So it's basically gonna be the exact same thing, only we're gonna be pulling from F instead of E over here. So you can just copy this formula. Now remember, you don't wanna copy the cell because that's gonna adjust the formula. You wanna come in here, hit Control C. And then the other thing you gotta remember is you always have to do something to leave this box here. Otherwise, if you start typing, it's gonna erase this formula. So you either hit you know, escape or whatever else. I like to hit escape after I've hit Control C, come in here, put your cursor here and paste. And now that's gonna pull the same Pittsburgh one because it's the exact same formula. We just need to change this to F. And now it's gonna pull the power place. Okay. And then we're gonna pull this down. So now we've got the data present for, um, you know, which line each skater belongs to. So Sid Crosby, is part of Pittsburgh scoring one and Pittsburgh power play one, okay? So hockey is a little bit complicated in terms of pulling stacks because you're trying to pull the actual lines and guys can be part of multiple lines. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna start counting. Now, at this point, I wanna say that there are probably numerous ways to pull the stack data that we're trying to get into this. And it's very possible that the way that I'm doing this is very complicated compared to some of the other ways. Honestly, I have not sat down to really think, is this the fastest, smoothest, most concise way? Uh, really, this is just the way that I do it because it's the way that I know, the way that I came up with, and the way that I'm comfortable doing it. If you have a different way, faster way, better way, by all means. But for me, what I'm going to start doing here is I'm going to start counting the instances in, uh, in the section here where I pulled the lines. So the first section here we're going to do is going to be for main, and the second is power play. And for these, I'm going to call this main stack and power play stack, OK? So here, I will, I'll just use some other colors here, just so we can keep track of the fact that they're different. Okay. So again, we're going to use our if blank, then blank. However, I'm not going to go all the way back to L3 to the first player here. I'm going to use it for the first block where the stack appears because I also want this to be blank over here 
if the defense is blank, even though there's actually a player there. So we'll say if AM3 equals blank, then blank, because AM3 is where we're looking at here. So now the formula is going to be this, count if S. Now the S means multiple criteria here has to be true for us to count, okay? Now the first bit of criteria that we want to be true is that we don't want the header to be a D or a G, okay? So the way I'll do that is I'm gonna say count if, criteria number one is going to be providing AM through AU, okay? And then that's our range. So the header range is our criteria range number one. And our criteria number one is that it is not equal to D. For this, you have to put the not equal to in quotation marks under the count if criteria. And you have to use and for the, for the other part of the condition, and D. So this says the first criteria range and criteria is the headers AM2 through AU2 cannot equal D, okay? So don't count the ones that equal D. So these, okay? Now, after that, we're gonna put a comma and it's gonna ask for criteria range two. So criteria range two is going to be the exact same range because we also don't want to count the ones that equal G, okay? So that's second bit of criteria. So now that I've got my two criteria assigned, I'm gonna say, what do I wanna count? And for that, we need our, uh, where'd my thing go? Okay, so criteria range, did I screw something up here? What did I do? So count if criteria range one, and that's criteria one. Criteria range two, and that's criteria two. I should not have put this there, right? I should have put an and. That's right, I'm not paying attention, sorry. Criteria range three now. Now this, we're gonna do a different range. We're gonna do this range here. So AM to AU three, and the criteria range here is that we're going to count AM three. So this is basically saying if it's, if the header is not a D and not a G, then count how many times pit one appears in this range here, okay? Now we'll close our parentheses and, uh-oh, we get a problem in our formula. Of course we do. What did I do wrong? Oh, I literally just realized I wrote equals AM3. Equals if AM3. <laughs> Sorry about that. And there we go. So now it's saying two. Is that accurate? It is. Pit one, pit one. It appears twice. So now we've got our formula here. We're going to copy this across because we want to do it for everything. But again, we're going to come back up here and we're going to say, what needs to be locked in? Well, we don't want this to change. So we're gonna use our F4 lock. We don't want this to change and we don't want this to change, okay? Our ranges should all stay the same because really the only thing we wanna do is change if we look in a N3, if it's blank and we wanna pull how many times whatever's in a N3 appears here, so pit two. So now that I've locked that, I can copy it, a and paste it across. And now we've got some different numbers. So it's telling me that pit one appears twice, which is true. Pit two appears once, which is true. And then Boston uh, two one, uh, once is true. Seattle two once is true. And pit one twice again, which is true. We know that, okay? So that's all good. Now, the second part of this, we really can just copy this formula, bring it over here and we can change it for the power play stuff. 
So instead of AM, we're going to be looking in AV. So we want to change both of those to AV. And instead, let me get this out of the way. Excel always puts this in the way. And instead of AM is the starting uh, point of our array that we're looking in, it's AV. The end point is BD. So we're looking in here. And then again, it's AV to BD. And then again, it's AV to BD. So it's only looking here for everything. Now that good, yes. So here it's saying that there are three instances of pit power play one, one, two, three, which is true. So we can already start to see this is our three man stack. It's pit power play one. Let's copy this all the way across. There we go. So you'll notice here, what do we have here? Just empirically, you can look right now and see. We have a three, two stack. It is pit power play one, three and pit one, two. And those very well may be the same players, but it is what it is. So um, now we have our counts working. And actually what I should do, I should have done is I, I like to call these count for main stack and count for power play stack, because these are not the stacks. These are just the instances of each thing. And I'm just gonna adjust this to where, you know, it's not in the way. So now we're going to need some more columns here. And what we're gonna look for here are kind of our three types of stacks, main stack, sub stack, sub stack. Um, you know, that would be like a three, two, two, or a three, two, one, or a three, three, one, right? And, and in this case, just for simplicity, I'm going to count a single instance of, an, of a one-off player as a one stack. So I'm going to make six new places here. Main, sub, and sub for the main stack, main, sub, and sub for the power plays, Okay. And we're going to do two more colors here, and we can do whatever we want. We can make this a lighter green and a darker green, whatever we want, OK? Now, these are going to be merge. I'm going to call this. These are going to be stacks and power play stacks, or whatever you want to call them, OK? And now. Uh, I'm going to call this main sub one, sub two, main sub one, sub two. And in hockey, it's very possible and very likely, in fact, to have a, the first sub stack to be the same as the main. Like you could have a three, three, you know, very common type of stack. So now that we've got our counts here, the way that we're going to figure out what type of stack this lineup over here is, what type of stack does this best fit is by coming in here and typing a formula. So now for this, I'm gonna go back to my if L3 equals blank, then blank, because L3 is the first player li listed here. And I only wanna not put something here if the whole lineup is blank, if there's no lineup there, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a large function. And I'm going to say the large of, and it's going to be this range right here, the large of the counts of the main stack. And when you use large, it's you do large, and then the array is where you look, and then comma, k is like to what degree. So one would be the first largest. If I did three, it would be the third largest number. So we're going to do one here for the first largest. And then we're gonna close our parentheses and boom. So this is saying that two is the largest uh, number that exists in this array. And what that's basically saying is the most any one team stack appeared here is twice. Now, um, that will get us to our, um, that will get us to our, 
main for this one, we're going to take this formula, put it into our substack. Now, the only thing different about this is rather than looking for our first large, which is just going to give us two again, we want to see what the next largest one is in case there's a substack in here. But the problem is it's going to give us a two again because the first large is this two, the second largest is this two. So what we really want to do is we want to find the next one after this. So we can use BW3 plus one because whatever the large is here, it's going to exist that many times. And we could just add one to it to say, now what's the third largest? And in this case, it's going to be one because there's no substack there. And then for the next one, we can take this formula. And now instead of saying just BW3, we could say BW3 plus BX3 plus one. And again, it's one because there's no other main, you know, substacks there. So now that we've got that done, we want to look in here, okay? And for this, it's basically just the same thing, but we want to look in a different place. Instead of BE, now we're starting our search in BN, and we're ending it in BV. So we're just looking here, boom. So we can take that, and we can copy this, put this in here, and we can see we're starting it in BN and going to BV. And then here we want to change this BW to be Z. Okay, because we want to add on to this. And then for this, whoops. Now we start in BN, we end in BV, and we want to change this to be Z, and we want to change this to CA. And there we go. <clears throat> and now what this is showing us is that the large of the, the large of the power play stacks is three. Okay. Because again, we know that there are three instances of Pittsburgh power play one in this. So now that we've got this information, we're going to need one final stack section where well, we can make this whatever we want I'll make it blue because why not and I'll actually I'm gonna have to do that again blue okay now this is going to be our final stack this is going to be the, what determines the best fit because we've got several stacks here but realistically, you would want to call this a three-man Pittsburgh power play one stack would be the best indicator of what this is. So how are we going to find out what the best fit here is? It's very simple. We're basically just going to um, use this formula. If L3 equals blank, then blank, uh, then we are going to look for the large of, and we're going to look for the large of these. What's the biggest one? And it's number one, because we want to know the biggest. And Excel has a problem with what I did. Oh, I see it again. I, for some reason, again, I forgot my F. Okay, so now we've got that. That is our, um, That is our formula to find the largest of all these. And the next thing we can do is copy that in there, but we just want to look for the second largest, okay? <clears throat> and in this case, we don't want to avoid getting duplicates because if this was a 3-3, three, three, we do want this to indicate it's a 3-3, three, three, not a 3-2. Um, and then the next, the next last one here, I'm going to do a little bit of a different formula. I'm going to say if 
L3 equals blank, then blank. Now, the next thing I'm going to say is um, if CC3 plus CD3 equals 8, then 0. Otherwise, that's basically saying if, we've, if it's a 4, 4, then we know there's no substack. It's used, it utilized everybody. And then I'm going to say if error, which I've gone over before in the past, but basically this is saying if this formula in here produces an error, do the thing that comes after it. So if error, and then we're going to say the large of, and here we're going to do um, the same range, this whole range, okay? Do the large of this, and the K part of this is going to be three. Let's get the third largest. Now, when I put my parenthesis here and my comma, it's going to ask for my value if error. So if error, then do what? Well, if error, I'm just going to default it to number one, meaning if it can't find the stack, a stack here that's, you know, like a, like a two, two or something like that, just make this a one because it's clearly just a one off. Okay. So there we go. Now that pulls these stacks. Let's send all of this stuff down. Let's come back to here and send it everywhere down. So now we'll start to see a picture here. We've got uh, what did I do wrong? This is clearly, is this right? So we have a problem here. I can see right off the bat because this Nashville power play one should have found two instances in the power play. And we have San Jose one should have found two here. So what the hell went wrong? Ah, so what's going on here is I accidentally, when I, so I, yeah, I should not have locked the three in this because that is looking only in three. We wanna be able to have this adjust as we go down so that it looks in four, five, six. But I do wanna lock the twos because that's where the headings are. So that's what I did wrong there. So change that and paste it across. And then we have to do the same thing here. We don't wanna just paste it all the way across because this is a different formula. Unlock the row for the actual players here. And then I didn't lock any of those. So that should fix things. There we go. So now it's finding all the various stack types. And we know that we've got a three, a two, a two, a three, a two, right? So we don't, um, we're not pulling any three threes in this. So did I not make three three stacks? Tampa Bay one, Tampa Bay one, Tampa Bay one. Tampa Bay one, Tampa Bay one. So van one, van one. Van. So yeah, so it looks like I just didn't make three threes, which I thought I did, but I guess maybe I didn't. Let's go back and see what I did. Hmm. So, Let's see what went wrong. Oh, I know what the problem is. When I made my stacks, I allowed defense in my stacks. Had I not, I would have gotten some actual three threes. So um, these are technically three threes if Again, this is all about perspective. Like, what do you consider a stack? Do you consider, you know, the fact that the third, the, the first line Boston defenseman here, I mean, um, the first line Pittsburgh defenseman was part of their stack? Do you consider that to be a stack or do you consider forwards only to be a stack? So I think that's really the issue. 
is it comes down to interpretation. And for me, when I do NHL, I always consider only forwards to be part of my stack. Let me crunch a few more lineups here and pull those in and see if we can get some actual 3-3 three, three forward stacks in here. Put those in here. And now let's, we've got some errors here. Let's see what our errors are. So if we get some errors, that's good because we'll figure out what the hell we did wrong. So this is telling me that there's an error in my third, in my sub stack two for this one, so large of BE to BM. Oh, you know something? I don't think I've ever encountered this before. This is basically saying that since it's all a three, three, Kind of line do we put in here? San Jose one, San Jose one, San Jose one. Min one, min one, min one. And min power play one, min power play one. No, it's uh huh. Yeah, so we get a 3-3 three, three main stack. So actually never, I, I don't think I've ever actually encountered this before, but it's definitely a problem. Um, what it's doing is clearly this is a, um, so this line up here where it found an error. This is a 3-3, three, three, San Jose 1, San Jose 1, San Jose 1. Min one, min one, min one. So it's a three, three main, okay? And then in addition to that, we're pulling uh, a two here. So, there. so I think what we have to do here is for this, we need to add this if, oops, this if error clause, make it a one. It doesn't like me doing that though. No, it's fine with it. Because yeah, so we want three, three, one. So, and then same thing here. So uh, it's weird that that didn't come up with me before. I'm not sure why. I must have something in my main NHL model that accounts for that. And I don't know why, because I've never gotten that error before, but if you use the if error, that should fix it. And here we go. We're starting to find some three threes and stuff like that. So we're good. Now, um, the next thing that we want to do here is, so we've got this, the type of stacks that we have. Okay. So we know, We've got a three, two, one. We've got a two, two, one, a three, two, two, one. And we get some three threes down here. Okay. Some three, three forward stacks. But what stacks are these is the question. Okay. So let's take some time now and actually identify these. So let us go ahead and create some more space. Here we go. And now let's let's get some headings in here and we'll use a different color. And what did I choose? No fill. Derp. There we go. I'll put this green. Okay. So now we're going to start taking a look at what what these stacks really are. So here we've got let me see. Sorry, one second. 
sorry, I'm having one problem here with my feed. Okay, so the first, to pull the main stack here, this is not going to be the most complicated thing in the world. It's going to be if L3 equals blank, then blank, because we don't want to pull anything if there's no line up there. Now we're going to do an index match. And the index, where we're going to point the index, is going to be in the place where we, uh, hold on. Jeez, sorry, I am struggling with my controls over here. For some reason, I'm going to. All right, sorry, that was giving me such a hard time. If L3 equals blank, then blank. And now we're going to look in this index. And where we're going to look is back here at this array here, underline. So we're going to look in here, and we're going to match. And what we're going to match is this, CC3, because it corresponds to the first main. We're going to match that to and here's where it gets um, oh actually you know what I should that's what I'm getting confused for. You don't want to just match you don't want to just look in here. you want to look across this whole thing. So this should go to BD. That's what I'm getting confused on. So we want to go all the way across and then where you want to match this is all the way across here. Okay, and you want to match it type zero for exact. And here we go. So now what this does is it looks for the three here and it finds it and then it pulls the stack that corresponds to where that three is. Okay, and in this case, it's here. And that'll tell you that your first main stack is a Pittsburgh power play one. So the next thing, we could absolutely, and I'll show this to you, okay? We could just take this formula, pop it in here, look in the same place, but instead look for CD3 to match our main stack. And boom, Pittsburgh 1. Is that accurate? Sure is, right? Because Pittsburgh 1 is our sub stack and our 3, 2. The reason why this becomes problematic and I'll send these down is what happens down here where we have a three, three, okay? Well, in our three, three stack um, also, I think this should say six, right? Because there are only six in a three, three. So there we go. Or Is that right or is it seven? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Is it? Right. So it's going to, we'll just keep this a six because um, there are essentially six forwards if your flex is a forward. Okay. So there we go. That should have been six. Sorry about that. All right. But now, so you see the problem is in a three, three stack, it's going to pull Edmonton and Edmonton, right? Now we know that this isn't the case. This stack is not an Edmonton one, Edmonton one. It's an Edmonton one, San Jose one. So how we get this to read the next highest is unfortunately quite a complicated situation. Um, unfortunately, this is gonna be pretty long and so uh, walking you through this is going to be a pain in the ass, but I guess it is what it is. Let's get into it. The real formula here is going to be 
if L3 equals L3, fine. The next bit of this is going to be if and it's going to be CD right here. If CD3 equals one, then blank. Because that basically says, if there is no stack to read here, we don't want to start reading one-offs. Then it's going to be an if and. If and. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit ugly, OK? It's going to be if and. We're going to be looking in this count for stacks section at this BE. If and BE3 equals CD3. If this equals this. Okay, and so basically what we're trying to do is we're fishing. We're fishing for this number two, the second stack in all of this. So if this, because we know that whichever, st whichever stack here, whichever position corresponds to the stack here is going to be a two. So if this is this, number two is two, which it is then this is probably going to be our second stack. But it's also going to, for the three, it's going to match for the three, for the three, even if it's Edmonton, Edmonton one. So what we're going to try to do here is we're going to add a second proviso to this, which says, if this, if this BE3 is in fact CD3, and now we have to come over here and AV3 because AV3 corresponds to BE3, right? It's the first player listed. And AV3 does not equal CF3 the team that we already decided is our main stack, okay? In other words, so if this is equal to this and the team that is corresponding to this is not already accounted for, so here it would fail that test because Edmonton one would be Edmonton one. If those things are true, then we know that a V, three is the right stack here, okay? So that's the first part of this. Now, why is this so complicated? Because now we have to do this for every single spot here, okay? So now we have, if this in this match and AV, and this are not the same, then that's correct. However, if it's false, if that condition is not true, we have to look at the next spot. So now for this, we're going to copy this if and section, this whole thing, okay, up to the AV. And we're going to paste it in here, but only this time we're going to be looking from, instead of from, BF, I mean, instead of at BE, we're going to be looking at BF. So we're going to be saying if BF is equal to CD3. Okay. So if this matches this and we're going to go one more than AV. A W, because that corresponds to BF. And a W does not equal 
CF. We're going to leave that one alone. Then this is not a V, it's a W. So again, just to recap, it's basically saying if BE matches CD, then that's possibly the stack. We just have to check to see if it's already been accounted for. So if the stack that corresponds to this BE, which is AV, does not equal something we've already accounted for, then all right, that's it. End of story. Stop there. However, if some of these conditions are not true, this doesn't match this, or this is already accounted for, try the next one. If BF matches this, does AW match something we've already accounted for? If not, if all those things are true, then stop there. If those things are false, we have to move on. So then we have to keep doing this. And each time we're gonna be changing here, BE is gonna now become BG and AV, which, which remember we've already accounted for AW is going to be the third in line, which is AX, right? So now this is AX and AX, okay? So, and again, we wanna keep the other things the same. So now we're gonna add another comma and we're gonna do it again. And now instead of B, now instead of BG, we're gonna move on to BH, okay? And since we were at AX, this is gonna be AY. And now we're gonna do it again. And this is gonna be BI, and this is gonna be AZ. And now this is gonna become BJ, nice. And it's not AZ, the next thing after AZ is BA, right? So it's gonna become BA, do it again and it's going to be bk and it's going to be bb bb i do have to say one thing important when this is over hopefully i remember i'm going to do it again and it's bl and it's bc We do it again, and it's BM, and it's BD. So here's what I need to remember. So actually, before I get onto that, let's go ahead and close this out, right? Or do I know? Do I need to keep going? Um, You know what I, I need to do? I need to keep going. I need to do it across the whole thing. That's right. Sorry. Damn it. So now this becomes BN. And this becomes, oh. Where, where did I leave off? I forget. I forget where I left off. Uh-oh. Uh. -oh. uh I just realized I made a big mistake. All right, you are gonna hate me, but I promise I didn't mean any harm. So I screwed this up. Um, I, for some reason, thought this was my starting of my line section, not my power play line section. So we've got to go back here and change all of these AVs to AMs. So sorry, I am human. And then our AWs have to be ANs. And then AO. Don't need to remember to tell you the thing that I was going to tell you when I'm done concentrating on this. Are helps to know the alphabet here. A S D 
Ti. A U. Okay. Now this B N is going to be A V. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, I forgot that I copy and pasted that. So now I'm going to copy and paste this if thing again. All right, now we're right back on track. So sorry. Um, all right, so I'll tell you the thing that I'm going to tell you after. So if BN is CD3 and then, a, so then it's a V, okay? So now I'm changing this BN to be O and this AV becomes AW. Okay. And then B, P, and AX. And ER, oops, BQ, I forgot about Q. BQ, Y. And now be our easy. And BS. Bunch of BS that I screwed this up. And BA. BT. BB. You see, and finally, BV and BD. Now, let me just get this closed. Now, this is going to be fun. Lots of, lots of, lots of parentheses to close here. So let's just do it and do it until we see a black one. Which means we've reached the end. That should work. Okay. Damn, that would have sucked. All right. Now, the thing that I wanted to tell you. I'm sure you're wondering why the hell we are looking in this D, D, and G if those aren't going to matter. The answer is you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, I'm just doing this because I don't want to get screwed up and lose track of what I'm doing. The reason I'm doing it is because in my model, I actually have one sorter that works for FanDuel and DraftKings. And so like in my model, if I come over here and type FanDuel right here, all of this changes into FanDuel. Um, the positionality changes, everything changes. In which case, I forget exactly where it is, but in which case, like this, I think is be the flex, right? And this is a goaltender, this all gets rearranged. So for me, it makes sense just to search everywhere because there's no harm in looking. And if I were to leave these spaces out, then I would have to change my formula entirely for FanDuel. And that doesn't make any sense. If you are just doing this for DraftKings and you want to save some time and effort, then feel free, as long as you keep good track of it, not to count these. You don't need to look here. You could jump from AZ to BD as long as you jump from BI to BM. I mean, um, as long as you jump from uh, BR to BV, right? So just keep track of it. But anyway, now that we've gotten through that ridiculous formula, um, let's come down here and look. Now, what do we notice? The Edmonton one that was double counting is now San Jose one, which is beautiful because that pulls our Edmonton one, three, and our San Jose one, three. And it effectively tells us that we have a three, three, Edmonton one, San Jose one. So now um, here is the other news. The other news is that if you want to do this for the Substack too, 
in case you have a 322 or a 222, then the formula is even longer than it is for this one. And it's even more annoying. And I will basically just tell you what it is. I'm not going to take the time here to run this whole thing right now and annoy you to death. Um, I will tell you the only change is that you basically need to do the same thing as this, okay? Only as another condition within your AND, AM3 cannot equal CF3. In other words, I almost did it again, damn it. Uh, AM3 Pittsburgh 1, if that's the one that matches, it cannot already be accounted for, okay? We already have that. AM3 cannot equal CF3. You then need to also make sure that you haven't accounted for this as your substack. So in every one of these, you need to say, and with this comma, AM3 also cannot equal CG3, okay? Cannot equal this as well. So, um, you know, really you just have to go through it and add it to every one of these. So you would just go in here, boom, add this, change this to A and, okay? So that's how you would do it for that. Um, <clears throat> obviously it's C, this is the error you're trying to avoid, but since I didn't go through the whole formula and do it, it's gonna give me the error. <laughs> So go through the whole thing and do that, and you'll have this column. I'm not going to take all that time in the video um, to do that. So basically, there you go. Now you've pulled your stacks. You can see that this is a uh, uh, Pittsburgh you know, one, blah, blah, blah. The other thing you can do here is we can add yet another section. This is the, well, I'll show you maybe two more things. I don't want this to run super, super long. Uh, here we can, you can basically just do a very simple code, okay? Which is equals, if L3 equals blank, then blank. Actually, you know what? In this case, what we want to do is if CF3 is blank, because you may not have, you know, something here. If CF3 is blank, then blank. Otherwise, pull in CF3 and a quotation mark, a space, a parenthesis, and another quotation mark. So the quotation marks tell you to pull in literally what's inside here. So a space and a parenthesis, okay? Uh, a left parenthesis specifically. And then also, in addition to that, Let's also pull in CC3, which corresponds to this. And lastly, let's pull in a right parenthesis. Right? And now, what that tells you is that you have a three-man Pittsburgh power play one stack here. Okay. And then you can do that for your sub stack one. Only difference being instead of CF, you want this to be CG. And instead of CC, you want this to be CD. So there you go. So now you can, and again, if you do do, if you do end up doing your third sub stack, which I do recommend you do, you can pull that in here. But now, at a glance, you can look at this lineup and say, all right, this lineup right here is a Pittsburgh power play three, Pittsburgh one, uh, three, two. This is San Jose scoring one, two man, natural power play two, I mean, natural power play one, two man. And you can see these are three threes. And there you go, pulled in all your stacks. So that's how you pull your stacks in. I very much hope that that helps somebody. 
and have a good day.